So over the past year, I've been using the Sony FX3 to film all of my YouTube videos. While my channel tends to primarily focus on photography, every once in a while I like to give a glimpse of the video side as well. Now, I just want to start this off with a disclaimer. If I was using the FX3 just for YouTube, it would be pretty overkill. Pretty much every big photography or filmmaking YouTuber uses either the FX3 or the A7S III. I hope it's obvious, but if you want to start making YouTube videos, you do not need this camera. I could just as easily make any of the videos I do now with a Sony a7C or pretty much any other camera. With that said, I do use this camera for stuff other than YouTube such as commercial gigs and filming weddings. So after owning this camera for about a year, it's paid for itself already several times over. But how I run my FX3 depends on the gig I'm currently shooting. So I just wanted to go over my FX3 rig that I've been using for about the past year to film my YouTube videos. Everything you see here is what I run with most of the time, but sometimes it is a little bulky, a little heavy for some shoots I'm doing, so I will break it down a little bit. So the first thing I want to start with is the FX3 itself. This camera is absolutely incredible. It is a 12 megapixel sensor which allows it to have great low light performance. So even if I'm shooting at night, which I do occasionally in my videos or in low light in general, being able to switch to 12,800 ISO with basically zero noise is absolutely amazing. It was pretty much the deciding factor in making me wanting to get this camera. One of the best parts about the FX3 body is that you don't really need a cage for it. I do have a half cage on my FX3 currently, but I really did not need it and I only picked it up for a little bit of extra protection in case I ever dropped the camera or something. The XLR handle that comes on the FX3 is completely clutch and makes it easy to switch between all of my different audio sources. Whether it's my XLR that I use to film most of my videos at home with a microphone, I also have this small Rode microphone on top as well in case I ever need it. I normally actually don't use this, I very rarely do, not for YouTube videos at least, but I always have it there just in case. But for audio, I usually run my Rode Wireless Go microphone. Uh, this is the original. Now, I am thinking about replacing it soon in the future with possibly the new DJI microphone, but we'll see. It's not really necessary at the moment, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, also on the top handle, I have a monitor, which I use maybe half the time a lot of the time it's kind of you know it's kind of bulky so i don't even usually put it on the camera if i'm going out to film youtube videos like my photo walks i usually stick to the on-camera monitor for exposure checking my zebras and all that stuff then i really just use the monitor for you know framing making sure my composition is good the monitor i'm currently using is an old viltrox monitor that i've had for years um, I don't find the monitor to be that important for me, so I have not upgraded to a newer one, although I am considering the small HD Action 5, which is really nice. This HDMI cord I have on here, it's um, pretty bulky, it's not really flexible, but it's very sturdy and has held up for over a year. I'm not even sure what the brand of HDMI cord is, but every other HDMI cord I've used in the past has failed me or it's too loose in the connectors so this one it's just worked so i stick with it on the front of the lens i currently have a small rig matte box i think it's the mini version but i only use this about half the time otherwise it's really pointless and bulky especially on a day like today where it is overcast and i don't need to worry about lens flares if i'm shooting during golden hour or around sunset or during the day in general so i will often just take this off if i'm not using it then on the front of the lens, I currently have the Peter McKinnon uh, V&D Mist Edition. It's really nice, but it's really expensive. Really not necessary to get a variable ND filter as expensive as this one, but it is pretty convenient. It is nice. That mist adds a nice little bit of softness to the image, which takes away a lot of that digital sharpness on the FX3 footage, which I really appreciate. This is the two to five stop. Other than that, I think the only thing we haven't gone over is the lens itself, which is the 24 to 105 G lens from Sony. Pretty much all of my YouTube videos have been filmed with this lens. The aperture is f4, which is not a concern at all, since for most of my videos, I tend to have the aperture upwards of 5.6 to 8 anyways. It's also a great lens for shooting at night with the FX3 because you have that 12,800 ISO, which even at F4, there's often times where I still need to throw this ND filter on even at night because it's just so bright. So just another reason why this combination of camera and lens is perfect for pretty much all of my YouTube videos. 
Now there's a few other lenses I also use occasionally for filming my YouTube videos and other stuff as well, like I mentioned earlier. But for a lot of talking head stuff, for most of my videos that I'm doing, holding the microphone and I'm filming those videos, I shoot them on the 35 1.4 G Master lens. I used to use this lens a lot for photography, but then I kind of retired it from photography. If you've seen my past videos, you know. But I use this lens pretty much strictly for video now. Now the other lens I've been trying to use a bit more as of recently is the 20 millimeter 1.8. This lens is also great for talking head stuff. It's a little bit wider, so it gives you kind of a different perspective. It can make rooms look a little bit bigger than they actually are. I also used this lens quite a bit on my last photo walk video as well. But yeah, with these two lenses in the 24 to 105, they cover pretty much all of the needs I could ever have for filming my YouTube videos. It's great for wide shots. It's great for zooming in any kind of B-roll. And then you have the 35 and the 20 millimeter, which are also great for talking head and low light. So I have all of my bases covered. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of my FX3 kit. I've been using this, like I mentioned, for about the past year, might be about 15, 16 months at this point. Now, I would like to make a video in the future, maybe a review about this camera, going over my thoughts and how I've enjoyed using the camera, if I have any problems with the camera. This video is not that, so look out for that in the future. But for filming YouTube videos, for filming commercial gigs, for filming weddings as well, all of those, this camera does absolutely perfect for all of that. And I actually tend to use the 24 to 105 for most of that stuff as well. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you don't need this camera to start making YouTube videos. I hope a lot of you guys understand that. And I could make a, a video about why gear doesn't matter or that topic and my thoughts on it another day. But you don't need this camera. A lot of people think I actually film my videos with the Sony a7C as well. That's not the case. I do use the FX3, obviously, as you guys know. But for everything I use this camera for, it is a workhorse. It's probably my favorite camera other than my Sony a7C. And it does everything I need so well, I don't really see myself having the need to upgrade it in the future. But more on that in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to help support me so I can continue growing and reaching a larger audience. I hope I could help inspire you guys in some way, whether it's taking photos or to start making YouTube videos. But all that matters is that you just go out and shoot. Thank you.